Hi, uh, my name is Sanjana. I'm from India. My name is Michelle. I come from El Salvador in Latin America. I'm uh, Ria Fernandez and I come from India in a city called Mangalore, which uh, has been selected as one of the 100 smart cities in, uh, in this, under the Smart Cities mission in India. And that is the primary reason why I'm here to study uh, the Smart City Solutions program. As you know, it's not a very common master program that is available right now in the world. I think about three or four universities in the whole world are offering it presently. The main reason that I uh, even diverted a bit from the field of architecture was because I felt there was a huge gap in how our cities are designed. We have architects designing the building, but we don't have architects who are informed about how the building sits in the city. I studied architecture in Taiwan and I was able to do my bachelor thesis in urban design and I learned a little bit about cities and the importance about, for example, the social infrastructure and realized that that's a big area of opportunity in Latin America, for example. So I realized that this was the right program for me to be able to help or to improve the quality of life in countries like mine. So when I was talking to people about what I could do next, and uh, I heard about the program that I was looking for, and uh, instantly it was like, oh, it's a smart city, and what could we do? And then I started reading about it, and the, there's a huge buzz in India about smart cities. And what struck me the most was uh, what we're doing for so long uh, with our urban planning and things like that is is something that we, we have not changed in India. And this, this 40, 45 years, we're just doing this and urbanization and everything is all these problems. And instantly I read this description on the website saying, yeah, we're gonna, yeah, there's something different. You're gonna change everything. And I'm like, yes, let's, do, let's be a part of it. German cities have a lot of needs. For example, here in this beautiful city, Stuttgart, we see that this city is specially built for cars. So we don't have a lot of infrastructure for people that ride bikes or that walks a lot, right? Um, here, a lot of people uses the uh, public transport. That's very good. It's very convenient, but they also have like delayed trains all the time. Um, if we start thinking more about people and less about cars, we could save costs from infrastructure. So we would be having more people like riding bikes and with this more healthy people and this um, creating more public spaces for people leads us, for example, to have a more, more diversity. So the whole idea uh, that I have is that today we, we lead lives which, which have stress for sure, which uh, we're, we're doing the back and forth, we're doing the grind. What, and what we're planning in a, in a smart city is to have better resource efficiency, is to have, uh, we're trying to move to automation, we're trying to have um, digitally and data-driven designs. So data is going to help us take efficient decisions. For example, one of the needs that we see in cities like developing countries or developed countries is, for example, to give back the city to the people, to make it more human, to, be, to make them cities to live in that actually people want to live there. The people smarter for a reason because they will be more responsible towards the environment. That's one major change that we need to bring about. And education, definitely education. And the way we think about how our cities to be, uh, because we have ruined it enough, and we shouldn't be doing the same for, I don't know, many more years to come. In 20 years, I imagine a city where humans don't have to struggle for the basic needs all over the world. Humans don't have to undergo so much of stress in order to, you know, make a life, make a living, enjoy the resources that nature gives us. And we work in an efficient, um, equal, inclusive and sustainable world. <laughs>